Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have a fantastic presentation waiting for you now. So in the last session, for those of you who attended, we specifically talked about the need for speed, scale, and quality in a DevOps program. It's great that now we're going to have a customer who's beginning their DevOps journey, who's been a long-term workload automation artist customer, uh, Desjardins Group, that's going to be presenting the next session. So I'm sure Walter, who's with me here, is going to give a big introduction. But I, let me just tell you that it's one of the biggest financial institutions in, uh, in Canada out of Quebec. It's one of the largest uh, cooperators. And uh, they are very, very good, powerful, and correct users of Odysseys as a tool. Walter himself is a established thought leader in the space. He's well respected. He has tremendous experience. He has over 25 years of experience in ID ops, covering leadership roles in both the workload escalations and the workload management side. And now he is one of the key influencers uh, in the DevOps journey that this company is beginning. Right? So he's also been a fantastic partner, giving us the right kind of prompts to make sure that we go uh, do the right investments, do the right enhancements. And we're you know, really happy to have him as a partner. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Walter to join me on stage. Here you go, Walter. Let me just move it to your next yeah. slide. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Bonjour. How are you? During the lunch hour, specifically. Uh, let me, before we start, introduce myself a bit. Um, I'm a, an IT operations guy, more operations than development. So you will see my French accent appear once in a while. I've worked uh, 11 years at Royal Bank of Canada, mostly in operation stuff, uh, leading also some support teams and doing a lot of uh, project, major project uh, within the Royal Bank. Worked after that change from a Toronto main office to the National Bank of Canada. This is where I had to kick back into my French and start relearning French. Uh, we call it Franglais. This is where we started doing our stuff. Did a lot of, again, operation stuff. And I had the chance to, during my career to, to lead a small team of operations and development teams, eight people in operations, eight people in, in development, where we used to manage about $30 billion a year of transfer, international wires. And this is where you know, the notion of DevOps that we have today, uh, going back about 10 years, uh, we had that notion because we were directly implemented or directly located near the customer. So they would renegotiate a deal. They would come and see us. We needed to take a look, do the business analysis, and do all the analytical stuff, and then bring it into production real fast. Why? Because they negotiated with the clients they would be doing this within a two-week period. So that was really a good DevOps operation for us. But of course, like all those organizations, even, even National Bank, and I moved to Desjardins about four years ago, we centralized a lot of this stuff. So now we, we put more ops in one side, them and one side. And this is where the cutoff started beginning. I think we need to take a look at how we're going to bring this back. And like Desika said, there's a lot of things in regards to tools that can help us a lot. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you a bit Desjardins, just to give you a perspective what is Desjardins. Uh, I'm going to talk about our workload automation project. And this is what Desika started off at and give you a perspective of what we, the challenges we faced, what we did and go back into the lessons learned. And after that, I'll answer any questions and answers. Uh, there's a microphone in front if you want to ask those questions. Who is Desjardins? Uh, just to give you a perspective of the Canadian institution, banking institution, there's about 80 standard financial banks, I'll put it banks, and there's about 300 credit unions, and Desjardins is uh, the leading inside of it. So within Canada, we are sixth, and within the world ranking, we are 104th. Just to give you into perspective all of that we've done, it's just a history of a lot of the technology we've implemented in Canada. And we've been in a leading edge in several options. As far as mainframe, putting the first accounting system within Canada that does the whole accounting system from the deposit to the rest. So I'm coming, to, where am I going with this is there's a lot of legacy stuff that we're still living with, okay? We did a lot of innovations and I'm gonna start going to 2015 where the business really pushed us and pushed IT 
And this is where we delivered in 2015 one of the applications on the Apple Watch. So that was very innovative for us. And this is where the business said, guys, excellent work. We did deliver on that in a, in a most fashionable way. Very visible within the organization. Again, 2009, Desjardins went into a transformation. I'm just, I'd just like to put you in perspective the way we are settled and organized right now. And we created uh, the Desjardins Technology Group. So everything that was IT was centralized into one part. Um, from there, we, we separated our operations and we gave different teams different mandates or different um, responsibilities for development for the business units. So you got your retail banking, you got your insurance and this and that. So those are all different development teams and the operations is transverse, okay? Inside you'll see there's some information uh, in regards to projects that we have, uh, the number of mainframes, et cetera, the number of workstations that we have. This gives you a scope of what we have presently. Going to our project. So when we started taking a look at the migration, we had Autosys uh, from CA version 4.5 in different entities used by different people in different way. We also have another scheduler within the organization. And we still have one small legacy TWS that we need to migrate. But we had multiple versions of the same scheduler uh, 4.5, which reached end of support by 2013. We had no support contracts uh, starting uh, in for, because of sustaining engineering for 4.5. And there was several decentralized groups using the product. When I say decentralized, I mean not necessarily just operations, but also the development group were doing their own stuff. One of the questions uh, from operations, the different groups, and also the development group is, why are we migrating to 11.3 when 4.5 is so stable? And I tell you stable, we didn't have no incidents. It was running very, very well. And also the development teams, what they did is they really maximized the utilization of the product. They were using 4.5 for everything because it was all code. You could code it very easily. They created jobs to verify other jobs and this and that. So when we came into the migration process, we were confronted with a lot of change management from their, that team. Again, we wanted to align best practices. That's why we wanted to move from 4.5 to 11.3. And Desjardins needed to move forward to gain productivity. <clears throat> we wanted to go into more an aligned process, be able to move faster within process and deployment by using Autosys and automation and standardization. We even standardized the names of the jobs, and that was hectic, because each one had a different naming convention, and we tried to standardize that. Just to give you a perspective of volumes, uh, we had about, when we finished a part of the project around September, end of September, about 41,500 jobs. And at the end of the conversion, we, we ended up with 49,814. Why the difference? Because we realized that by scoping and going to see the dev teams, we had to change the way they were doing it with 4.5 and then put it into 11.5 properly. So that's why the incremental. But it did work out well. You know, we did do the change very well, but we'll see in the success factor later on. But we had to be, uh, CA had to be with us to justify everything that we had to do. There was a lot of change management to be done within the teams. As far as executions, we are now at approximately 270,000 3, jobs, and the number of servers we have right now is 3,487. We are still in the final steps of conversion. We should be finished by end of year. It's been a long process, I'm telling you right away. We had to do a lot of meetings with the different teams, but up till now, what we've managed to do is stabilize the environment, create nice jobs, standardize everything, and now we'll be moving into another step which will be optimizing all of these jobs because we are still finding out that developers are creating jobs to, create, to check the job that he's doing, and he said not only once, but they keep repeating it over and over again. So we need to utilize, you're laughing, you must be seeing the same thing, but we're, we need to come back 
uh, and assess all of this and see how we can work better with other tools on leveraging all this surveillance of, of the jobs. Success factors. For sure, CA commitment was essential to be able to do this. And, and, I, and I tell you, when we started this project, trying to just sell it and saying this is the best way to go, and this is a required upgrade, and all of the changes need to be done, we needed CA to just help us and address the issues that the users were telling us. The users being, like I say, operations people, even my own operations people within my own group, and also the development teams to make sure that we address them properly. So we focus on, 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 on the migration success, where we want to go, what we want to do. And of course, what we want to be able to do is measure how well, how well this has gone and what did, it gain, what did it give to the company. We had bi-weekly issue reviews. We expedited all urgent open issues with CA and they're still with us today, just making sure everything is okay. They assisted us in the migration planning because we had different business units. For those of you that work within financial institutions, there are some peaks and some balance within, depending on which business you're talking to. So we needed to adjust rapidly. If we had any issues or something, we needed to replan fast to be able to continue to meet our deadline of end of this year. Okay, so we did run ac across some issues and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later on. And also, Key point is that CA went with us during the migrations of our jobs the weekends. This is essential. We, ha we didn't want to be able to uh, push back the migration if we're issues, technical issues that could be fixed on site. And they did help us for that. So, lessons learned and what we need to look for. Change management, again, is one of the key issues to making sure that we had to deliver on top. So that means specifically meeting with the teams, operations and also the development teams, taking a look at what the issues were, okay? A lot of the change management that we faced when we started the migration was, it works fine. Oh, by the way, I'm used to do it this way. And by the way, my naming convention is, is according to what my standards are. And we wanted to centralize everything into one big view. So I cannot, Desjardins could not afford to have still again different versions, different operations group doing the scheduling. We had to centralize everything into one single group. One of the issues, and I told uh, when uh, Desekan and Nicole asked me to come over here, are you sure you want to come and present what's going on with the auto source migration? We did have some issues with QA from CA. Some of the, uh, the upgrade or the patches that we received did have some other problems, brought us other problems. And I'm glad to hear that Desican, we did give them some recommendation as far as deploying those patches to facilitate our lives. It is not normal for all my sysadmin every weekend, depending on what we had to do, if we had another patch upgrade, to go on every servers and deploy this. So this is a, a welcome change, and I think uh, you're listening to your customers very well. The second, I was very happy to see that uh, in your presentation. Also, uh, lessons learned, we, we need to get teams rapidly on product knowledge and capitalize on all functionalities of the product. This is ongoing. Uh, I know we still need some training, and I was talking to a gentleman just about two minutes ago. We are not using, I'm sure right now, the full capability of the product. We are just finalizing the migration, and my manager is telling me, Walter, let me just finish the migration, and after that, we'll see what we can do to maximize the utilization of the tool. And also, we want to take a look at, and continuous deployment is something I really want to look into. Also, within the organization, um, just to give you an overview, I am in service mode with IBM. I'm in operator mode with IBM, service mode for the mainframe, operator mode uh, with IBM for my mid-range, and I also have internal teams that are doing uh, the, the execution uh, of the stuff and doing some, um, sorry, the support of my infrastructure and also of the job scheduling. So I have three different contexts here where I need to regroup and for Desjardins to have an overview of everything that's going on as far as uh, workload automation. We need to look for work 
product enhancement that will help us be more efficient, and you just name one, uh, Techisan, that's excellent. And we need to have a close partnership on market trends and innovation solutions. We need to know exactly what's going on within the market. So this is uh, about the project itself. Uh, I would say it started off roughly, and it went on better and better as teams work together in collaboration to do this. But we still, I think, have a lot of work to do to optimize, maximize the product, and use it to its full potential. Now, we will be sending my team out for IDASH training to make sure that we're all aware of that and have one single console. Uh, I'd like to talk, this is, I know when they, when they asked me to talk in front of you, it's mostly about workload automation, but I just wanted to give you an overview of the DevOps journey within Desjardins. Uh, we are still working to get a plan of how we want to address DevOps. There are some small initiatives that we are having right now, uh, using ServiceNow, to give you an example, on some applications that are not client-facing, but are back office support, and we are currently now trying to go into a DevOps tryout with this in a fast path way. This is our first attempt to use DevOps. Although it's been said several times during the week, uh, we just, I just want to recap some of the stuff. For us, DevOps, there needs to be a culture change within the organization to be able to move forward. This is happening. Uh, we are restructuring our whole um, uh, IT infrastructure and also the way we want to do development within Desjardins. So there are tool sets that are being chosen, and I got one of my colleagues here, that's actually here also, taking a look at all the automation tools that we can have and testing tools that we can go. Uh, we also need to rethink, I believe, the architecture of the applications. Desikan talked about by model, and, and this is very important to us. My mainframe is my my core information piece, which we need maximum stability. Uh, we need to make sure what we do is, is done properly. The sequence of it is long, when we know about it. But we want to change the architecture to be able to, around it, everything that's web-based, move faster and implement much faster. Currently, I have seven major, seven major deployments within the Desjardins group. And when I say major, I mean that we're impacting the mainframe, I'm impacting my branches, I'm impacting also everything that has to do with my internet platform. Why? Because they're so interlinked, I cannot afford to do it in a rapid mode with an impact of something else. And this needs weeks and even months of preparation. Okay? Next thing, we need to find a disciplined way for getting software out faster, better quality, and a better way, okay? And I've seen some presentations here with very interesting in which they go from, and I think it's from AT&T, where they go from developing, testing, putting in production in an automated way. And this is where we want to go in, in the future. Is there any questions that you want me to answer or? Oh, sorry. Oh, I, I backed up, sorry. Any questions? Nothing? One once? No. Oh. Hi, uh, my name's April. I was, um, I'm a workload automation specialist. Okay. for my company. Uh, we don't use Autosys, we use DE, but naming standards are extremely important. I'm, I'm neurotic about naming standards because okay. it just it helps so much. I saw the number of jobs that you have. How did you even go about deciding the type of naming conventions that you used? Well, we did, uh, we created prefix, depending on if it was on a prod environment, pre-prod environment, the type of jobs, and also the type of um, subsidiary where the job came from. And I, I can't hide to you, I think the job, the naming convention was about this long. Why? Because we were centralizing everything into one single place. And my operators needed to find if that job went wrong, who exactly and where exactly it is. 
So uh, I can share with you the naming convention. I don't have it in my head, but I can share the way we named the, the whole job sequence. And it, it's with the help of CA and my teams also that we, we went through that. But definitely, one of, and one of the preoccupations that the change management thing that we needed to do with the, the dev team is they said, well, especially in the, in the dev environment, they said, you know, Walter, you're changing the name that I know this, this long to a name that's this long. Uh, we're never going to find our jobs within that. So basically we said, well, you can do a search. You know? it's just, it's, again, issues and you do a search with just that job name. And by the way, the prefix that was there is just to help us find it. Your job name is still the, it remains intact. Okay? But I can share it with you if you give me my name later on. I can share exactly the name. Any other questions? Bobby. Hi, so I know you talked about your change management challenges. Were they more technical or human? Um, I would say more human. Human, and like I said, uh, why? Because 4.5 was so stable, and the dev team were so optimized, they optimized it so much and used it to, uh, and one of the, the technical guys from CA explained to me, more than mm -hmm. its potential. They used it, maximized mm -hmm. it at its most potential. Okay. Bringing it back from, you know what, 11.3 does, you know, to, to a version, we had to reprogram some of these jobs and fit into 11.3. That created a lot of frustration. You know, the dev teams are saying, well, you know, we got other things to do than retrofit this stuff. We need to advance and do a re the, to respond to the business requirements. But I would say not necessarily technical, but change management was a major issue. Okay. How did you, how'd you get your developers to adapt to what you wanted them to do? Well, basically, like I said, don't stop talking about the emotional part of it. Talk about issues. Uh, when we were talking about naming convention, it was one of them that came out right away. You know, oh, naming, we won't find our jobs and this and that. Okay, mm -hmm. we went there. We said 4.5, yes, naming can't be that long. 11.3, a name can be that long. Oh, we'll have difficulty in finding our jobs. Okay, mm -hmm. again, issue, answer. You can do a search for your job. You'll find it right away. That, okay. That's part of, a, of the stuff. But also, I need the, uh, just, when you present it to upper management, when you say we want to optimize, we want to standardize, we want to be able to have a global view of everything that's going on, this helps a lot in the discussion. And from there on, it went down to the teams. And we did some, some scrub sessions with CA. We sat down the teams together. What's the issue? What do you want to do? And actually, we found some of the stuff and optimization that mm -hmm. we, we provided to the dev teams, and they bought into it. Okay, but we need to understand again. It's mm -hmm. a question of uh, you know we're human, right? Mm -hmm. We don't like changes right, by nature. We need to understand exactly what the impact is and what exactly are you talking about? Is it emotional? Is it factual? And then after that, address it. I think there was one or two technical stuff mm -hmm. that we had a work around bait, but it was nothing major within the within the change management. Okay, thank you. My name is Bill. I work for Lincoln Financial. We use uh, AutoSys uh, 11.0 Service Pack 5, and uh, I'm an AutoSys admin, and we're in the process of going to 11.3.6 Service Pack 2 okay. Okay. and using uh, iDash with it. Uh, when you did your standardization, I, I, we, I did that a while ago to have the job names in a standardized way yeah. and, and went through that. Uh, the difficulty that we have is um, we have a, a more or less a manual migration process, use of Jill to take things from one instance to another. Um, how did you put teeth in your validation process to ensure that the naming standard was adhered to? Very good question. Mm, I'll have to come back to you. You know why? <laughs> because I, well, I didn't, wasn't the technical guy that did that. Though. But if you come and see me, I'll have the, the response for you. Pardon me? Okay. Any other questions, comments? Thank you for your time.